Hi everybody, this is Randy Suits with a letter and a song. The letter for October 13th is Eve Reads Like a Good Book. The Bible is my favorite book, but the book of Eve is my second choice for reading. Because we have loved, grown in love, laughed together, cried together, struggled together, shared common goals, and prayed together, she reads like a good book that is dependable and relevant. Dependable because I have found that her moral and ethnic quality is truth, love, kindness, love of God, love of family, love of friends, and Christ-like concern. She reads me incorrectly, ascertains my moods, welfare, happiness, needs, and desires. Such is our love. We are all books being written by the decisions, experiences, and accomplishments of our earthly life. God is actively engaged in the eternal development of our eternal character as he uses the experiences in this temporal existence to prepare each of his trophies for life without end in and with him, his son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit and thousands upon thousands of faithful saints in heaven. God gives each of us a taste of heaven in our good relationships on earth as a foretaste of the greater things to come. One day, our books will be opened before the throne of God and we will be rewarded for those overcoming decisions, trials, and successes. Until he returns or I go home to be with him, we will continue to write our personal and shared stories in our living record and joyfully receive from the hand of our God all the good things which he delivers every day of our lives. I shall continue to read the Bible, the book of life and word of the only living God and be grateful for my Eve, who, thanks be to God, reads like a good book. Let's read and write our books as one in Christ, your Kohane. A good relationship over the years does enable us to read one another like a book. That's one of the benefits of, of happiness in Christ, in the center of a marriage, or of a truth. Truly successful marriages have Christ at the heart of them. The song we're going to do today is The Isle of Innisfree, and I've done this before, but it really strikes me in many, many ways as a parallel to what Christians look forward to in going to heaven. In this song, a man is away from home, and he longs for his home place, which in this case is the Isle of Innisfree. In our case, it is heaven with the Most High God in his Son, Jesus Christ. So see if you can feel, along with me, um, the words of this song, the Isle of Innisfree. I've met some folks who say that I'm a dreamer and I've no doubt there's truth in what they say but sure a body is bound to be a dreamer when all the things far away and precious things are 
our dreams back to an exile. They take him home to that land across the sea. Especially when it happens, he's an exile from that dear lovely eye of Innisfree. And when the moonlight peeps across the rooftops of this great city, wondrous though it be, I scarcely feel its wonder or its laughter. I'm once again back home in Innisfree. I wander all green hills through dreamy valleys and find a peace no other land would know. I hear the birds make music fit for angels and watch the rivers laughing as they flow and then in humble shack I wander my dear old home and tenderly behold the folks I love around the turf fire gather on bended knees their rosary Dreams don't last, though dreams are not forgotten. And soon I'm back. Reality. But though they pay the footways here with gold dust, I still would choose. With gold dust, I still would choose my idol of Innisfree. Lovely song. That was the theme song of a movie called The Quiet Man. Um, uh, John Wayne was in that movie, and uh, uh, Maureen O'Hara. Uh, quite a good uh, representation of life as we have to live things. And now, my dear friends, may the Lord, even the Most High God, be with you in all that you think, say, do, and are. Thank you for being, and we'll look forward to seeing you again one day soon, God willing.